All right, we're going to be discussing the Hoffman 18 radiator trap. Uh, it's a relatively small trap and, um, and not a very good one, I don't think. I think this was designed to be inexpensive. And um, the only trouble is because it was so inexpensive, it was uh, overused. If you find this being used as a crossover trap in your tube uh, pipe system, I would remove it and replace it with a, uh, a 122A or the um, Barnes and Jones uh, big mouth trap. The uh, there it is, the Hoffman Specialty Steam Company, Waterbury, Connecticut. Um, We'd use a uh, inch and a quarter socket to get this off. And it's a relatively simple trap. I've got a cutaway version here. You remove the cap. The element almost certainly has failed a long time ago. And uh, it's now usually it fails in the sort of semi-closed position. This is the element. Um, it's basically a very simple bellows with a um, pin held in place with uh, the cap. The cap itself, uh, be mindful that it has a, uh, a gasket which uh, comes with it. And I would recommend um, if this is on a radiator then you can use the Barnes and Jones 2211 capsule. Again, making certain that this is the bottom uh, surface, which is an integral seat, is scrupulously clean. It's got a slight curve to it, so the you know, ceiling on this gasket is going to be um, a little bit dicey. Again, use a little schmear of NICs. Put that there, and you can reuse the old cap to uh, put this uh, back in operation. But my recommendation would be to uh, mark the cap in some way, is to uh, let somebody else know that this has been rebuilt. A Official Barnes and Jones 2211 cap is available at uh, a modest expense, and again, that's a definitive that uh, the ca the um, B element has been changed and the and the trap the trap rebuilt. The literature on this is kind of sparse. It does this trap or any mention of it does not show up in the uh, Hoffman data book of 1925 and by 1934 it's gone uh, from, the, from the data book. It never shows up in any of their data books. The only place I've been able to find the uh, literature on it is in an example here of the American Society of Heating and Ventilation Guide of 1928 has um, various articles on heating and in the back he has the advertising sections and um, the big name of that era is the Hoffman Specialty Company and uh, they're pushing their uh, their number two vent which we've discussed um, in other videos the various other products, the number one vent, the number five vent, the number six vent, the number four vent, the number three vent, the number 10 and 11. Here's a new product here mentioned. Um, nowhere else except here, the uh, number uh, 19 quick opening radiator valve looks superficially like the number seven, which is discussed here. And they have the number eight and here is sort of hiding in the bottom here the 
the number um, 18, which they say can be used as a return line or a crossover trap or a radiator trap. And that's what they're trying to sell it for. Sell it, I believe it was the number seven does most of the heavy lifting. And so they needed something to sell just in case uh, the pressures got too high and something went through. The number seven was uh, uh, misadjusted and they needed something to stop the steam to keep it getting, getting it into the return lines. And then, of course, they would... Um, you would either have a differential loop to uh, try to get the system uh, back in balance, get the uh, keep the water in the boiler. An example of the number eight trap, which um, as you can see here is designed as a return line trap. This was their signature trap, and the reason why it's the number eight was that it was the eighth product that they sold. The eighth product that they developed. The cap is uh, 1 and 15 sixteenths. And the element inside consists of three interconnected bellows, which in this, this unit, self-contained unit, and there is the um, integral seat at the bottom as opposed to the number 18 bellows, which just is consisting of one rather sad bellows in there. They were rather proud of this trap here, the number 8. I have an example where uh, for a salesman's model, they've really polished it up plated it out very nicely and did a just absolutely beautiful job of uh, cutting it open and uh, showing the internal uh, bellows um, and how they're supposed to expand and contract in the presence or absence of steam. And uh, if anybody's ever had to cut this thin steel, or excuse me, this thin uh, brass or bronze uh, material, they, they just know this is a really, really nice job and they've lovingly nickel plated it and uh, they were definitely proud of this valve uh, to be able to do something like this um, to um, put out for their their uh, their sales staff, their representatives um, and this <laughs> I'm going to say by by the, by the 1930 by the early 1930s, this is pretty much come and gone. Uh, I don't think it uh, it worked out very well for them, and yet there's still a lot of them out there. Uh, again, if I if you uh, see a number eight as a um, a line trap, it's probably better to replace it with a much more modern and 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 rebuildable trap. And that is what we have for you today. Oops.